Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. As an introduction this morning, I'm going to read for us selected verses from Psalm 45. My heart is stirred by a noble theme, as I recite my verses for the King. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. Your throne, O God, will last for ever and ever. The scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions, by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia, from palaces adorned with ivory. The music of strings make you glad. Then our scripture reading this morning will be from Mark 7, and I will also read selected verses from there. That is Mark 7. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled. That is unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observed many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders, instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, Envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. This is the word of God. Thanks be to him. Friends, do you remember the game we used to play as kids? We had to stand in a line. Then the first person will whisper a message into the next one's ear, and that one will whisper to the next one until the message comes to the last person in the line. The last person must then say out loud the message he or she heard. And very often, the message gets so distorted and improvised along the line of communication that the final message is completely different from the original. When the original message is sent for reinforcements, we're going to advance. It might come out on the other side as sent for three and four pins, we're going to advance. Now that was all fun and games, but it happens in real, life, in real life too, specifically in our faith. Our text today is a perfect example of how distorted the message of God can become. The fact that the Pharisees took Jesus on about his disciples not washing their hands before they eat may seem like a reasonable argument, at first glance anyway. Because it would be more hygienic after all. But the issue Jesus had with this lies much deeper. It lies in the motive of the Pharisees to bring up this point. What I mean is this. The law, which is the first five books of the Old Testament, was given to the Israelites to guide them in the way that they should worship God. At the heart of this is the Ten Commandments. And it worked well for them. And it can work well for us. We find guidance regarding a lot of moral aspects of everyday living. But the main purpose of it all is worshipping God. Okay, now jump a few hundred years to the 5th and 4th century before Christ and you find people who were called scribes. Now these people had one goal and that was definition. They wanted to analyze and interpret all of these laws into the finest details. And the problem with that was that all these laws became so, so complicated and expanded 
but it led to a lot of bylaws to define the original law. At the end, it was so difficult to follow all these laws and bylaws that all the energy and attention and focus went into following the laws, and with that, the original purpose of the law, to worship God, went out the window. The original message got distorted. It was now about following laws and not worshipping the lawgiver. The Pharisees got so focused on these laws that they completely forgot what the original law was all about. So they take on Jesus about his disciples not washing their hands before they eat. Now this was actually a law that was meant as a ritual to be performed by priests only. But they got so tangled up in all the laws and their own bylaws as inter interpretation of the laws that they decided that this washing of hands law should apply to ordinary people as well. You see, they were so focused on religion that there was no hint of any faith left. They used the laws to show people how bad they were and how good they, the Pharisees, were. Now Jesus, on the other hand, had a complete opposite view of this. He shows them that judging others' faith by human standards actually just highlights the judge's own distance from God. Because worship is all about God, not about human rituals and laws and traditions. And we are also not as innocent as we'd like to believe. Because we like to pay a lot of attention to things that shouldn't be the focus point. We like music that makes us feel good when we worship. We would like to wear church uniforms or dress in our best formal clothes when we go to church. We want the preacher to shout and jump up and down. We like to do things in a specific way and in a specific order. And yes, friends, some of these things are necessary and important. Because that is how we worship God. But haven't we maybe become so preoccupied by worship rituals that we don't focus on God anymore? Are we maybe so busy worshipping that we forget about the God we worship? All these rituals and customs and things we are used to are there to assist us in worship. It was never meant to be the focus point. The focus point should be God and to glorify Him with our worship. Now, during the lockdown restrictions, we were stripped of all our customs and habits regarding worship. Most churches, like us, had to do some form of online worship. And although it can never replace the physical worship service, we had to do what we can, and we thank God for the technology we have at our disposal to be able to worship in this way. Now, these two ways of worship, physical and online, have two big differences and one big similarity. The difference is, with online worship, people can't see me. I'm all alone. I can wear whatever I want to wear. I can sit in bed and follow the recording. I can watch only two minutes and then decide it's boring. Or I can even decide not to watch it at all. Nobody will know. And the similarity between these two forms of worship is with online worship, God can see me. And when he looks at me, I can promise you, he doesn't care what I'm wearing. He doesn't care if I'm in bed, or on the couch, or in the car, or wherever. He isn't impressed by any, of, by any attempt of me to make myself look good. Because what he cares about is my heart. He sees what my motivation behind everything is. Now, online worship kind of stripped us of our cover. The singing, the music, the uniforms, the fellowship with each other, all those things were gone for a while. The only thing that was left was our true selves, the part of us that God is really interested in. The plan is to start our physical worship services again soon. But before we go back, maybe we should use this opportunity we have now, each one of us, to really decide what we want to focus on. Do we want to focus on the feel-good atmosphere in church, the singing, the dancing, the rituals, or do we want to shift our focus to Jesus Christ, who is only interested in the part of us that people can't see, our hearts? We can cover up our impurities in front of people. We can even hide it from ourselves. 
but God sees everything. It is no use trying to impress Him with our beautiful, feel-good church services. If all the aspects of worship are not utilized exclusively to worship God who created us, it is all useless. Because worship is not about you and me and our feelings. It's all about Jesus. There's a song that's called The Heart of Worship, in which the writer confesses that we have made worship a show. And we need to get back to the heart of worship, Jesus Christ. I want to close with a few lines of this song. It says, When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come longing, just to bring something that's of worth, that'll bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you've required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you look right into my heart. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you. Friends, let us come back to the heart of worship. Not myself, but Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we glorify your holy name this morning as the one who was and is and forever will be. Despite what we see all around us, our faith is in you, because we know that you love us and you care for us. Therefore we worship your name. Lord, we come today to confess that we do not always worship you in the way we should. Sometimes we put ourselves in the middle and let everything revolve around us. We do not always worship you for who you are. Sometimes it's all about how we feel. For this, Lord, please, please forgive us and lead us to true repentance. Take all our sins as far away from us as the West is from the East. Lord, we thank you for the fact that we have forgiveness in you. Thank you for providing for us and blessing us way beyond what we deserve. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for friends and family. Thank you for who you are and for what you are doing in our lives. Lord, we ask you to please give us our daily bread. Provide in our physical as well as our spiritual needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. May the peace of our Lord be with us and may we spread his peace wherever we go. Amen.